Coming up this week, Perplexity and Amazon go to war over agentic commerce. Google Deep Research gets a new feature that we've all been waiting for. A new $20 million startup that promises to change how we use apps. And new data shows why Anthropic is now beating OpenAI. Stay tuned for all of that and more. And as always, if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Amazon has declared war on Perplexity after it sent legal threats to the company over its agentic browsing capabilities in Comet. In a letter from Amazon's law firm, it says Perplexity's Comet is secretly accessing the Amazon store, mislabeling itself as Chrome, posing security risks to its users and degrading the overall user experience. Amazon claims that Perplexity's Comet gives agents unauthorized access to a user's account and degrades the experience by removing options like adding to existing deliveries and bypassing Amazon's curated shopping signals. In the letter, it says that Perplexity's misconduct has imposed significant costs on Amazon, and that Amazon has had to track, investigate and address this issue, including by tracing Comet's AI activity and implementing security measures. Perplexity's CEO has responded by publishing his own response in a letter entitled Bullying is Not Innovation. In this letter, he says that Amazon should love this. Easier shopping means more transactions and happier customers. But, he says, Amazon doesn't care. They're more interested in serving you ads, sponsored results and influencing your purchasing decisions with upsells and confusing offers. He then cites some comments from Amazon CEO in their most recent earnings call, where he says that AI agents have an adverse effect on advertising. It just all leads to a return on advertising spend that's very unusual, says Amazon CEO. Now, this is a conundrum for both parties. On one hand, Amazon's ads business is now a $60 billion business that's growing year on year, and so it's understandable why they're wary about removing these eyeballs from the purchasing process entirely. From Amazon's perspective, they set the terms and conditions, and if they don't want agents accessing their stores in ways that haven't been formally agreed with vendors, then it seems reasonable that they should be entitled to enforce these terms. But it could also be argued that if you use an AI browser that can perform actions on your behalf, then the risk lies with the user who enabled those actions in the first place. The browser is, after all, logged into the user's account, and a user can stop the process at any time. Perplexity CEO argues that a browser agent is an extension of a user in this sense, and I'm inclined to agree with him. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Elsewhere this week, Google has unveiled a series of new agentic features of its own. Google's AI mode in search is getting a brand new set of agentic capabilities that will perform actions on behalf of users. So users will now be able to perform actions like making a dinner reservation and booking concert tickets. AI mode will find real-time availability for restaurants and then present you with a list of restaurants that include reservation slots. The difference between these capabilities and perplexities, though, is that Google is working through official partnerships to bring these to market. They say that they're currently working with partners including OpenTable, Resi, Talk, Tickmaster, StubHub, and more. Other new releases from Google include a new conversational feature in Google Maps, which it says transforms Maps into an all-knowing assistant. So, for example, you can now ask Gemini for recommendations for certain restaurants along a specific route and then request that that route be altered to include directions to one of the recommended places. Here's an example of it in action, where a user asks if parking is available at a local restaurant. Would you like to go to Kovai Cafe or hear about more options? What's parking like at Kovai Cafe? Parking is easy to find at Kovai Cafe. It is located in a complex with a large parking lot. Okay, let's go there. Okay, navigating to Kovai Cafe. Google's Deep Research is also getting some upgrades with the new ability to add files that are saved in your Google Drive into the Deep Research process. Now, inside the Gemini app, when you click on Sources, you'll be given the option to upload sources from your Google Drive, including Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and PDFs. So this could be extremely helpful for times where you're developing a go-to-market or product strategy, and you want to reference your internal files to help you to shape your research. And if you want to learn more about how to use AI to augment product discovery processes, including user research, then head over to Substack for this knowledge series on product discovery. In this piece, you'll get practical hands-on ways to use AI at work for things like market analysis, performing user research, building landing pages for proposition testing, and more. So head over to Substack if you're interested in that. Elsewhere this week, Windsurf has launched a new feature called Code Maps that's designed to help engineers understand code before you vibe it. The new feature will create a visual representation of your product's code base, 
and instantly link to the relevant part of the code base when you click on specific parts of a diagram. Now this is primarily designed for new developers to get up to speed quickly, but it could equally be helpful for product managers, designers, and other non-technical folks who want to get a better understanding of their code base. Cognition, Windsurf's parent company, says that the new feature is in part designed to help companies tackle what it describes as a vibe slop. In other words, AI generated sloppy code. And fresh from releasing new features to control AI slop on its own product, Pinterest has launched conversational features of its own. Their new AI assistant lets users describe what they're looking for conversationally, and it responds with tailored shoppable results based on a user's tastes. In a sense, it's a new way for users to search for things they want to find on Pinterest in the same way that Spotify's DJ is for users to find music. Pinterest says that the new assistant leads to a 30% jump in relevancy of shopping recommendations, and their CEO says that the company has been impressed by the performance of open source AI models and plans to use these to power more AI features in the future. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use this week, and we'll start with a new startup called Wabi. This week, it raised $20 million from Anderson Horowitz, and the vision here is to become a sort of YouTube for mini apps that lets users create and share their own apps. So the idea here is to build a marketplace where users can create and then share the apps that they've built. Someday, they say we'll look back on the App Store like we do cable TV. So if you're looking for new tools that you can use to create mini apps, then the beta for this is currently open. The next tool is something called Console, and this is designed to help tech companies auto-resolve repetitive IT requests. So for example, helping users who have forgotten their password, granting access to specific apps in your company, or updating permissions. You can create playbooks which let you use natural language to describe how requests should be actioned, and then Console will handle the rest. So if you're looking for tools that will help you to free up the time of your engineering team so they don't get bogged down in IT requests, then Console could be worth taking a look at. And the final product for this week is a new piece of hardware called Sandbar. Now this is designed by two former Meta user interface designers, and it's a ring that you can use as a conversational extension of your own thinking. It lets you create notes, record voice memos, and even control music, and is the latest in a series of AI-powered devices, most of which have failed so far. But I do think that a ring could be a helpful form factor for this type of product. So if you're looking for new pieces of hardware that can help you to augment your intelligence and to stay productive, then a sandbar could be worth taking a look at. Now let's take a look at some data and trends for the week, and we'll start with some new data that has been reported this week about Anthropic. In this piece from The Information, they predict that Anthropic's API business will generate twice as much revenue as OpenAI's this year, with revenues of $3.8 billion versus $1.8 billion. In this piece, they say that Anthropic could be generating as much as 70 billion revenue in total by 2028, up from close to 5 billion this year, with API revenues dwarfing its closest rival, OpenAI. OpenAI, it seems, is doubling down on its consumer products with hopes that it can introduce new monetization strategies. And this week, the head of Sora confirmed that the economics are currently unsustainable for the product. And this week, they released the ability to add to buy extra gens priced at $4 for 10 videos. But not everyone can afford to take part in the AI revolution. New analysis from Microsoft puts this into context this week, with Microsoft's new AI diffusion report showing that the UAE, Singapore, Norway and Ireland are the global leaders in AI adoption at 59%, 58%, 43% and 42%. But, as you can see from this graph, AI adoption correlates with higher GDP per capita. In other words, richer nations are more likely to adopt AI versus poorer nations, and barriers to progress also include things like language. Since AI is predominantly built upon English, this can act as a barrier for other companies to adopt AI in the workforce. Demographics of AI adoption can also depend on the types of features that a company releases. And Google this week said that the launch of Nano Banana has led to a very big demographic shift with huge growth in the 18 to 34 year old group, moving from being male dominated to having more female users. And finally this week, in its latest earnings call, Shopify says that AI traffic is up 7x since January of this year, and purchases attributed to AI powered search have increased by 11x. Speaking in the company's latest earnings call, the president of Shopify, Harley Fickelstein, said that 64% of Shopify's customers say that they're likely to use AI to some extent in their purchasing. So it looks as though whether Amazon likes it or not, AI-powered e-commerce is here to stay.
And on that note, I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.